talk about a lot of things on the show, and we talked about this last week that the S and P had the seventh best month ever last month, and so it really was a really good month. And and as we look forward, we had some good wage numbers and some good consumer confidence numbers as well. We did, and I think that's one of the things that the market was really anticipating. If you think about the sell-off that we had from the end of July until about the end of October, a lot of that was driven by the fears that the Fed had pushed things too far, maybe that we would have a hard landing, and that there really wasn't any sign that the Fed was going to be on pause. And all of a sudden, we fast forward to where we are now, the labor market showing signs of slowing, but not breaking. Wages are still growing, but not too fast. And in fact, this past week, we got those University of Michigan consumer sentiment numbers that showed a slight uptick in consumer sentiment. So things are looking a little bit better from the equity market perspective. You know, there was one time that I brought in a sweater and Danny said, 1987 called and they wanted their (laughs) sweater back. But, you know, you think about a story looking backwards and it seems that inflation is such a 2021 and 2022 story. It really is. And that does seem to be the consensus right now. And it's always uncomfortable to be running with the consensus when it comes to economic projections and thinking about the markets. I think a lot of people like to be out of the consensus, but really I think the consensus might have it right here as far as inflation being a story more of the last couple of years. We've seen supply chains dramatically improve and demand destruction is taking place as a result of these higher rates, but it's not as though it's actually going demand destruction with a wrecking ball. That is exactly right. And of course, the Fed doesn't want to give up before the job is done. And we did see a good jobs report, which was very interesting. That's right. And uh, something to keep in mind, because next week we do have the Federal Open Market Committee meeting. Chair Powell will be at the podium. And we do have to wonder whether or not the Federal Reserve is going to see the decent jobs number as a reason to hold rates too high for too long. Or are they going to focus more on the fact that, you know what, inflation, it is improving. They don't need to destroy the labor market in order to beat the beast of inflation. Exactly right. And let's change gears now and talk about earnings. Some really interesting earnings came out, and my poor dog saw the stock report on Chewy and was not so happy. (laughs) I know. I actually absolutely love watching when companies like Chewy or PetSmart, when they release earnings, just because I've got three dogs. I love dogs. I know you love dogs as well. But Chewy, their shares fell because they cut their sales guidance. A lot of this is during COVID, everybody got their COVID puppy. And as a result, you had to get all the food and all that. But apparently, pet adoptions are a headwind to the business. I just think this is such a fascinating story because we're very focused on the macro as far as what's going on with growth and inflation. This is something fairly micro, I think, specific to the company as far as, wow, pet adoption rates. That's something that's really relevant to their bottom line. And Dr. Jacobson's pantry probably has some Campbell soup and J.M. Smucker in it as well. We got Uh, those reports as well. Absolutely. Those were great. uh, Very good reports for them. They beat on the bottom line, top line. And I find this to be a fascinating story because they are benefiting from this consumer belt tightening that is somewhat taking place. If people are doing a trade down to lower cost items, they've been the beneficiary of that so far.